All right. Angle, okay. I'm going to do a um, uh, beef stew today. Uh, haven't made a beef stew in a long time. Uh, I got this. Um, yeah, organic beef's not that easy to find. Um, so we'll stick with just doing organic chicken, but uh, with other things, we'll just go with the normal stuff for now. Um, but because I know I said that I was only going to be doing high welfare meat, and that's not, that's just normal normal stuff but I'll be doing high welfare chicken anyway so anyway we'll come back to dealing with beef another time so I've got this beef shin it's supposed to be quite good there's some fat through it and we'll let it cook for a while uh, it's going to be fairly basic onions carrots and parsnip and got some mashed potatoes uh, I'll put these herbs through the mashed potatoes, I think. Um, tomatoes. And we'll steam some of these uh, greens as well. We'll do that at the end. Uh, do I want garlic in it? Do I want, do I want um, tomato puree? I'm not quite sure. We shall see. Hopefully I've got some beef stock cubes. Beef. If you don't get plenty. So just a fairly kind of standard recipe. Uh, just going to fry this beef up. <clears throat> Onions are quite annoying, they're a bit small, so we have to a bit of a half to work with. Starting off quite high, I've gone from six at the top down to four now. So it doesn't burn too much. It doesn't burn at all. Then. Once they start putting the vegetables in, it will, it will cool down. Colour on it. Can we go and go fairly big? 
because I think that the uh, to be honest I don't think I've ever bought shin before specifically so I assume it's going to take a while to cook it's going to go fairly biggish with these vegetables otherwise they'll just kind of uh, disappear pepper on, so I should have done that before the onion, but a uh, good bit of pepper on the beef. I'll put a smallish pinch of salt just to get a bit of salt into the beef, but obviously the stock is quite um, salty, so we don't need too much at this stage. Just turn it up now, turn it back up to five. put turnips and things in here as well. Maybe put some peas in that in at the end as well. But uh, yeah, any any of your root vegetables that would be good. And another yet another recipe which uses up lots of um, lots of vegetables. slight angle so they don't roll away but uh cut them big you tend to taste them a bit better as well you cut them small and they disappear although it's fine because it, it makes the, the gravy the, the sauce taste nice when the vegetables have disappeared and the, the vegetables have become the sauce but i'll go bigger this time Not in any hurry with that, the frying time is good, the frying time adds a lot of flavour to it, so... Just keeping an eye on the bottom, you don't want it to go, you can see it's, um, hopefully you can see, uh, but it's brown, it's brown but it's not black, you know, it's not burnt, but you, you have to just be careful that it doesn't, um, it doesn't burn, but the moisture comes out of the vegetables, when the moisture comes out of the vegetables it deglazes and it, and it, and it stops it from, uh, stops it from burning, so I'm able to sort of clean that a wee bit now. That's just some moisture coming out of those vegetables. Actually, I'm going to... Boil the kettle.
Soaking wet, spinning up. Garlic there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother with garlic. Garlic would be good, obviously, it adds, a, adds richness and depth. But um, I don't know. I just I think I'll I think I'll skip the garlic. So I'm going to dissolve these. Because if you put the whole stock cube straight in, sometimes they don't fully dissolve. And if you get a wee lump, if you just get a wee lump of that, um, and you eat that straight, can't pick one up. But uh, if you get a small lump of that, it's so concentrated. Uh, the, the, the saltiness is so concentrated that it's disgusting. It's really horrible. So. It's quite important to make sure it's dissolved. They do tend to dissolve okay as you're cooking them, but they don't always. Sometimes there's wee lumps that just don't dissolve through cooking. quite dark on the bottom now so I'm chucking some wine. Don't know anything about red wine, I just picked up the first one that came to hand. Six quid I think it was. A fair amount of that in quarter bottle. Really scrape the bottom of the pan. It smells nice. Tomato puree, tomato I think I will put in a wee bit of tomato puree, I think it gives a bit of body, a bit of depth. So I'm just going to let that um, sizzle there for a wee bit to take the harshness of the alcohol off it. Turn that right up to six. And scrape the bottom, you can see it sort of cleaned the bottom of the pan. Just what you want. So you kind of just take it right to the limit, you know, it's got quite, got quite dark there, but just before it, but it's brown. And you catch it just before it turns black. And that's what you want, that's the maximum kind of flavour without it going burnt. Everything coated in that red wine. Yeah, whether that's good, bad, or indifferent, I don't know. It's I don't know. Don't know nothing. You could put tinned tomatoes, you could put fresh tomatoes, some ketchup, you could go kind of quite 
you can make quite a tomato uh, beef stew and that works well but uh, I'm just going to use a wee bit of it a bit of that and that's it. I'm kind of just going to go no tom not too much tomato, not too much, uh, no garlic. Kind of going to, going to go more, you know, the beef. You know, I really want the beef to be the, the main flavour. So you've got obviously the beef and then the beef stock. Nothing else that's too strong, you know. So it's a beefy beef stew rather than a tomato -y one, even though there is a bit of tomato puree. But that will give some thickness to it. I'm not one for putting flour onto the meat and frying the uh, and frying it with flour on it. I think it goes quite claggy. Um, we can thicken it at the end with some flour and water. Uh, we can see. You can also put some gravy browning in it if it's not dark. But I reckon with the tomato puree, wine, and this uh, this beef stock, we should be all right. It should be dark enough. It looks dark, so I'll just make sure there's no wee lumps at the bottom. That's pretty much it. Just going to let that cook now, um, and then all I'll do is stick a lid on that. I'll turn that down. Stick a lid on it, and basically, when the beef is um, soft, it's done. really good already. Um, in fact it, it, it's very rich, it's very rich already. Four stock cubes for that quantity is maybe it's a wee bit much but it's okay. I might put in a touch more water. But that's going to be rich. Yeah that's going to be very rich which is good. So that's done. We'll just uh, we'll leave that and I'll just stick this, put the mash on just now. The mash will finish before it uh, mash will finish before it, but that's okay. You could peel it, but I can't be bothered. If we, cook, if we boil up this mash, um, if we boil this up and then make mash, uh, even if it sits and it cools down, when you put the mash in the bottom of the plate, when you put that boiling hot stew on top, it will reheat the mash for you. So, doing this mash ahead of time is is fine. And I mentioned in there, I think one of my first videos. I think in my first video. One of the reasons for doing these was uh, I heard somebody say that it was taking them 40 minutes to peel some potatoes for mash, to make mash. So you can see I don't even bother peeling them and that takes what did that take? You know, it takes about one minute. About one minute to go from potatoes in a bag to them being in a in the cooker. So. There's, uh, there's no effort in it at all. This is my deep fryer. I was doing some deep frying. And I was making some chips and things. Nothing too interesting. Just get a pinch of salt into that. And that's it. So all I'm going to do is, I'll come back when I mash them, I might put some butter into it, I'll put the, uh, put the parsley into it. So that's all there is to it, so I'm just going to cook the mash, mash it, cook the potatoes and then mash them, and then they'll just sit there until the uh, beef is soft, that's it. 
and you probably get three portions out of that. And I think that shin is quite, uh, relatively quite cheap. There was other uh, meat there, which was extra lean beef, which was a bit more expensive. Um, but if you let that cook with that fat in it, so we give it a good fry, rendering the fat out, and the fat helps fry the, uh, the vegetables. Plus, if you let that cook out, um, and soften with that fat in it, um, it will be very good. It will be very, um, it will be tastier than the lean beef. So a bit of fat in your stew is a good thing um, when you're cooking it for a long time. But uh, I think that's it. So I'll cut away. Oh, I don't have my, don't have my watch with me. Um, actually, I will just say the time. I can see the time. Can I see the time on this? It is 8.47, so it's 10 to 9, and I will cut away and I'll come back. So that's blipping away nicely, nice and nice and rich. So I'll come back when the potatoes are cooked, probably in about 10 minutes or so. But it's 10 to 9, so probably about 9 o'clock I'll be back. Right, I think it said uh, 8.47. Uh, so, 15-20 minutes-ish, um, and I can see that I can see that potatoes breaking up, so I know they're good. Um, but you can drop a knife through it, and, it'll just, and, and there should be a wee bit of resistance. But you don't want them falling apart to mash potatoes. <coughs> to mush potatoes. Question is, is do I have any butter? That's the thing. I don't know. Steam. I do. Yeah, good. slabs of butter into it. It's, um, I've kind of changed my diet a wee bit. Um, putting on some belly fat and some back fat, which is not nice, not very nice at all. And I'm 42, so it's that's kind of dangerous at that age. So I. Uh, There's no point in going on a diet because a diet implies that there's an end point and then you what do you do after that? So what I've been doing is, is I've cut out the um, uh, bread and toast and croissants and things for my breakfast and I just have a smoothie. Um, I'll do another smoothie video actually because I've kind of refined the I've refined my smoothies a wee bit. That's some nutmeg by the way. I've refined my smoothies a bit with using frozen fruit and using putting some oatmeal in it as well. If you can hear that noise, it's my cat's very loud. Kind of sarcastic purr. Um, so I've kind of cut the uh, the um, bread and buttery type things out, the toast type stuff out from my, my breakfast. So I can have a wee bit of butter in this mashed potatoes, you know, I have a, I say a wee bit, I can have a good about, amount of butter in this mash because I've, because I've cut down elsewhere. And also small lunches, that's the, that's the next thing, so um, rather than having a meal like this, which I would normally have for my lunch, I would normally have a big uh, plate of food like this, I've stopped doing that and I'm having more along the line of sandwiches, sized meals for lunch. So I'll be doing a um, videos on. Uh, I'm going to do a ham and cheese toasty, and I'm going to do a um, BLT as well. I've got the gear in there for that, so I'll be doing that soon. Uh, 
So I'm okay to put that butter in just now because I've hardly eaten any butter over the last week or margarine type stuff. Um, you could put cream into that as well and it's very 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 good but I don't have any. So that's just salt, pepper, nutmeg, butter. Um, you could put milk in it, but um, it softens it a wee bit. I'm not going to. Kind of think the milk makes it a bit kind of watery, almost. It kind of dilutes it a bit. I kind of quite like the richer flavour that you get just with without cream obviously it richens it more but, uh, the microphone is picking that up that's ridiculous potting. It's had like two plates of food already, so you know. It's so always just kind of wash this straight away, just like that, and then stick it in the dishwasher. Otherwise, you'll never be able to clean it, you'll never get it cleaned. So we'll mix this up and then we'll check the uh, we'll check the stew. But I reckon we'll be coming back to this. I mean, it's nine o'clock at night. I haven't had my dinner yet, um, and with my small lunches, I'm a wee bit hungry actually. But we've got to do those greens. I don't know how to do those charred things. I've never actually. Have I ever made chard before? I don't know. I'm just going to steam it with some nutmeg and stuff. I think I don't don't really know what to do with it. Um, I'm just. Uh, Obviously cooking for one here, so you know, you get my fingers into it, it doesn't matter. Mm. That is very, very good. So yeah. Having butter like that as a treat is better than having what would be more every day, you know, just as with toast and stuff, so. That's a good idea. God, it's almost sweet. That's really good. Just scraping the bottom, making sure there's any wee bits that are stuck. Just lift them up. Been on one, so it's not going to burn. So. Yeah, now that meat is still quite tough. There's a fairly fatty bit that actually, but. Uh, Very tough. That's really, really good. 
Um, really good but very tough meat. Mm, it's going to take a good bit longer. Yeah. The thing is that everything else is kind of ready-ish, you know, the sauce and the vegetables will be good at this point. So I will come back when that meat is soft. Good while, probably half an hour. I may actually have a wee bite to eat, sometime we snack. Um, probably be back in half an hour, maybe 10 o'clock actually I'll be back. have left at that 20 seconds and got at 10 o'clock. Um, so I never had a snack, I actually had a workout instead, I did some press ups and some pull ups. So I'm very hungry now. Steam is hot. Um, <clears throat> I think it's still a wee bit tough. I did stir it a couple of times um, just to kind of stop it sticking to the bottom. Uh, but um, that beef is very tough to the point where uh, it's okay, they're getting there. That's pretty good actually. It's fairly soft now. Uh, that's actually very soft now. All right, all right, we're good. So, um, yeah, that took a good hour that on my hand. So, I'm going to try. Uh, something uh, with this chard just as a wee bit of greens um, not quite sure what to do kind of want to put some lemon in it but I'll think about it <clears throat> I think I'm just going to wilt it down in a pan with some water salt, pepper and nutmeg So just kind of treat it like spinach, I think. Water into it. We'll just see what happens. Kind of want to put some lemon through it, but beef stew with lemon doesn't sound right at all. Well, maybe I'll try it. I'll try a wee bit of lemon for it, that'll be fine. Put my flipping hands in the steam. seeds in there. Okay. There's a bit of moisture in there so we'll just, uh, just leave that out. <clears throat> so 
So that's just a wee touch of water, salt, pepper, nutmeg, lemon. What we try and do is squeeze some of that liquid out of it. If you just give it a quick wipe now, it's much easier to clean than if you let it dry out. It's a wee bit of kind of wilted greens. Uh, the mashed potato has cooled down a bit, but it'll be fine. You could microwave it a bit, but uh, that's fine actually. It's a uh, Friday night for a glass of this red wine with it. So, so that's your, uh, that's your beef stew, nice big chunks of vegetables. There'll be good flavour from them. You'll be able to taste that carrot like that, wilted greens, mashed potatoes, and that will sit. So I will just let that cool down. Give that a clean. Um, all I'll do is let that cool down and. Uh, pop it in the fridge, put it in a plastic container, put it in the fridge and then all you do to reheat it is you just, that, you know, there'll be another two very large or three smallish portions from that um, just don't let it dry out too much just let it cool into a plastic container, into the fridge and then just put it in a pan and warm it up, just boil it up, microwave the mashed potatoes and you can just wilt some of that green stuff down um, uh, again as well, so it's very easy to reheat and it will just get better and better that in a couple of days. I mean, this is really nice and rich now. I can taste it when I clean the plate there. Um, in a couple of days, it's just going to get better and better. So as long as you get it into the fridge as soon as possible, and um, cool it as quickly as possible, it will last. It will last three, four days, and it just gets better and better. So um, that's beef stew and mashed potatoes, wilted greens done. <laughs> 